What if I told you that the most devastating earthquake in Japan's recorded history broke every rule in the seismology textbook? March 11, 2011. A magnitude 9.0 megaquake tore through the seafloor off Japan's northeast coast. Scientists had predicted a maximum magnitude of 8.0 for this region. They were catastrophically wrong. But here's the terrifying part. Deep sea drilling expeditions into the fault zone revealed something that stunned geologists worldwide. The subduction zone that generated this monster quake was weaker than tissue paper. This discovery did not just rewrite earthquake science, it exposed a hidden vulnerability that threatens every major coastal population on the Pacific Ring of Fire. Today, we are diving into the fragile secret that the Tohoku megaquake revealed and why places like New Zealand's Hikurangi Fault could be next. Two years after the Tohoku disaster, an international team of scientists launched the most ambitious deep sea drilling expedition in earthquake research history. Their target was the Japan Trench, the underwater canyon where the Pacific Plate dives beneath Japan. What they found 7,000 meters below the ocean surface changed everything we thought we knew about megaquakes. The fault zone itself was only five meters thick. That's thinner than a two-story building is tall. But this narrow band of weakness extended over 50 kilometers along the seafloor. When scientists pulled up core samples from the fault, they discovered something extraordinary. The rock surface was mirror smooth, polished to an almost glass-like finish. But the real shock came from the mineral analysis. The fault zone was packed with smectite clay. This isn't ordinary clay. Under the extreme pressure and temperature conditions found in subduction zones, smectite acts like geological grease. When the fault begins to slip, friction drops to nearly zero. The plates don't grind against each other like rough sandpaper. They slide past each other like ice on ice. This explains why the Tohoku quake was so catastrophically large. Traditional earthquake models assumed subduction zone faults had high friction. Scientists calculated maximum magnitudes based on how much stress these rough, sticky faults could accumulate before breaking. But if the fault surface is essentially frictionless, there is no limit to how far the plates can slip. The numbers from Tohoku are staggering. The fault moved over 50 meters horizontally during the quake. That is the largest fault displacement ever recorded. The rupture traveled 500 kilometers along the seafloor in just minutes, moving at speeds that existing models said were impossible. Temperature played a crucial role in this catastrophic failure. At the depths where the Tohoku Fault ruptured, temperatures reach 150 degrees Celsius. Under these conditions, the smectite clay minerals undergo a chemical transformation. They release bound water, creating a lubricating film along the fault surface. The higher the temperature, the more slippery the fault becomes. But here is what makes this discovery so alarming. The smooth, clay-rich fault surface was not created by the 2011 earthquake. It was already there, formed by millions of years of slow, steady plate motion. The fault had been quietly preparing for catastrophic failure, accumulating stress while maintaining an almost frictionless interface. Scientists realized they had been fundamentally wrong about subduction zone mechanics. Textbooks described these faults as rough, irregular surfaces that built up friction over time. The reality was the opposite. These faults are precision-engineered slip zones, capable of releasing enormous amounts of energy with minimal resistance. The implications hit the scientific community like a seismic wave. If the Japan Trench could generate a magnitude 9.0 earthquake when models predicted only a magnitude 8.0, what did this mean for other subduction zones? Were coastal populations worldwide living under a false sense of security based on outdated earthquake models? The drilling expedition also revealed why the Tohoku tsunami was so devastating. The massive horizontal displacement of the seafloor created a water column disturbance unlike anything in recorded history. Traditional tsunami models assumed much smaller fault movements, 
The 50 meters of slip generated waves that traveled across the entire Pacific Ocean, carrying destructive energy thousands of kilometers from the source. This was not just an academic discovery. It was a wake-up call that forced seismologists to confront an uncomfortable truth. The Earth's most dangerous fault zones might be far more fragile and far more powerful than anyone had imagined. The Tohoku discovery sent shockwaves through the global seismology community, and nowhere more so than New Zealand. Scientists there had been studying their own subduction zone mystery for decades. The Hikarangi Trench, where the Pacific Plate dives beneath New Zealand's North Island, exhibits behavior that suddenly made terrifying sense. For years, researchers had documented strange slow-slip events along the Hikarangi Fault. These are earthquakes in slow motion, where the fault creeps forward over weeks or months instead of rupturing violently in seconds. Scientists initially viewed these slow-slip events as pressure release valves that reduced the risk of major earthquakes. The Tohoku findings flipped this understanding completely upside down. Deep-sea sampling along the Hikarangi margin revealed the same geological signature found in Japan. Smectite rich clay layers and ultra-smooth fault surfaces. Those near-frictionless conditions helped enable the Tohoku megaquake. But there was a crucial difference. While Japan's fault had already released its accumulated stress in 2011, Hikarangi's fault has been quietly building pressure for over 500 years. The slow slip events are not releasing stress. They are evidence that the fault is already so weak it can barely hold the accumulated strain. Each slow slip episode brings the system closer to catastrophic failure. Geological evidence suggests the Hikarangi Fault is capable of generating a magnitude 9.0 or larger earthquake, directly threatening Wellington and the entire North Island population. But the implications extend far beyond New Zealand. The Pacific Ring of Fire contains dozens of major subduction zones, and preliminary investigations suggest many share similar geological characteristics. The Cascadia subduction zone off the Pacific Northwest coast shows evidence of the same smooth, clay-rich fault surfaces. Historical records indicate this fault generates magnitude 9.0 earthquakes approximately every 500 years. The last major rupture occurred in 1700. Chile's subduction zone, which generated the largest earthquake ever recorded in 1960, exhibit similar geological conditions. The 9.5 magnitude Valdivia earthquake moved the fault over 20 meters horizontally, demonstrating the same ultra-thin, ultra-low friction behavior discovered at Tohoku. Recent drilling expeditions have confirmed extensive smectite clay deposits along the Chilean margin. Alaska's Aleutian Trench presents perhaps the most concerning parallel the 1964 Great Alaska Earthquake, magnitude 9.2, ruptured along a fault zone with geological characteristics nearly identical to Tohoku. The fault moved up to 18 meters horizontally, generating devastating tsunamis across the Pacific. Current seismic hazard assessments for Alaska may be significantly underestimating future earthquake potential. The revelation that subduction zone faults are fundamentally weaker than previously understood has forced a complete reassessment of global seismic hazard maps. Current earthquake building codes and tsunami evacuation plans are based on maximum magnitude estimates that may be off by a full magnitude point. A magnitude 8 earthquake releases 32 times less energy than a magnitude 9 event. This is not just an academic concern. Coastal megacities, from Seattle to Tokyo to Santiago, were built assuming certain maximum earthquake and tsunami scenarios. If those assumptions are wrong by even half a magnitude point, existing infrastructure and evacuation plans become inadequate. The human and economic consequences of this miscalculation could be catastrophic. International research collaborations have identified over 20 major subduction zones worldwide that require urgent reassessment based on the Tohoku findings. 
each represents a potential threat to millions of coastal residents who may be living with a false sense of security based on outdated seismic models. The geological detective work continues, but the pattern is becoming clear. The Earth's most dangerous fault zones are not the rough, high-friction surfaces described in textbooks. They are precision-engineered weakness zones, polished smooth by millions of years of plate motion and lubricated by clay minerals that turn solid rock into geological grease under pressure. The international scientific community has mobilized UN-precedented resources to understand and monitor these newly recognized super-weak fault zones. The International Ocean Discovery Program launched a global drilling campaign targeting critical subduction zones from Alaska to Chile to Indonesia. Each expedition aims to map the extent and characteristics of these fragile fault surfaces. Real-time monitoring systems are being upgraded worldwide to detect the subtle precursor signals that may indicate an approaching megaquake. The slow slip events observed at Hikarangi and other subduction zones are now recognized as potential early warning indicators rather than stress relief mechanisms. New tsunami modeling incorporates the possibility of much larger fault displacements than previously considered possible. Coastal communities are revising evacuation zones and building codes based on scenarios that account for 50-meter fault movements and the resulting mega-tsunamis. Early warning systems are being recalibrated to account for the ultra-fast rupture speeds observed during the Tohoku event. Research into clay mineral behavior under extreme conditions continues in laboratories worldwide. Scientists are working to understand exactly how temperature, pressure, and water content affect fault strength, hoping to develop better predictive models for catastrophic failure. The Tohoku Megaquake revealed that our planet's most dangerous fault zones hide their true power behind layers of slippery clay. Subduction zones from Hikarangi to Cascadia may be capable of far larger earthquakes than current models predict. This discovery fundamentally changes how we assess seismic risk for every coastal population on Earth. Subscribe for the latest research that could save lives in your region.